Hey there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 4 review. And today we're going to be talking about the latest episode to drop, Crocodile. We get another brand new hero reveal, plus some more development left off from Truth between Jagged and his kids. And it's pretty significant stuff. So with that being said, let's jump into the episode. So we start off the episode witnessing the terrible band Kitty Section serenading their friends with a song about unicorns. And honestly, I think the less said about this song, the better. Was it written for five-year-olds? They're not the Wiggles. You'd hope the children of Jagged Stone would be able to come up with something a little bit better than this, but there you go. Also, time to find a new lead singer, I think, and maybe remove the horns from the masks. They make it look a little bit, um, odd. After the performance ends, Luca notices that Marinette isn't there with the rest of their friends and asks her that she's okay, to which Alia awkwardly replies that she's doing okay. She's just super busy. And yikes, maybe work on your excuses a little bit. Never has it been so obvious that somebody was getting ghosted. Although, to be fair, it should match up with where Marinette was at the beginning of the season. She barely had any time to spend with Luca anyway, so you could technically rationalise the idea that she's not actually ghosting you, mate. Anyway, Luca then becomes a sad boy and tells them that he knows they're lying and that Marinette stopped coming because she knows he's in love with her. And well, that happened, I guess. I can't imagine saying something like that out loud in front of all my friends. It's great that they're super supportive and really emotionally engaged with one another, but sometimes it really does stand out as odd when they say things like that. And then it's made even worse when Rose crafts the most blatant lie of all time, that she can't come to rehearsals because they happen at the same time as her water pony classes. <sighs> water pony? Again, how old are these kids? Singing about unicorns, naming their band after kittens, and now believing in mythical water horses? Although, I do appreciate the dedication to the lie, inventing the fictional water pony Pompony with his beautiful golden mane, and who gets jealous and upset when Marinette doesn't come to the classes. And she actually gets so into the lie that she forgets that water ponies don't even exist, and decides that the best way to help Luca and Marinette become friends again is to send him to the water pony classes too. And then it's revealed that the real reason that Marinette's not coming around is that she's too embarrassed. Why? Didn't they make up at the end of Truth? And it seems doubly hypocritical that she's embarrassed about meeting up with Luca and refusing to go anywhere he would be, and yet she literally dragged Kagami across Paris to make her confront Adrian. And what do her friends do about this? Why they decide that they're all going to go to her house, sit her down, and tell her she's being selfish and hurting his feelings for no reason. That she should go and talk to him to sort all of this out. Psych, they actually decide that they're going to trick her into being at the same place as Luca by throwing a birthday party for Julika on the boat, and thus, since they're twins, Luca will be sharing the party. And so Marinette will be forced to not only see him, but to talk to him as well. And this seems like a recipe for disaster that's going to end in tears. And I really don't get these kids. One minute, they're so socially aware and understanding of one another's emotions, and the next they're completely incompetent and socially stunted. Anyway, they get permission from Julika, who seems a bit hesitant, but agrees anyway, and then they all assign party planning roles to themselves, whilst also celebrating that Adrian can't come, and thus can't distract Marinette with his raw sexual magnetism. We then move on to Marinette's room, where Ali's informing Marinette of the party for Julika on the boat. But almost immediately, Marinette remembers that they were going to go to the cinema for Julika's birthday originally. But now that the party's on the boat, Luca's going to be there too, and she'll be forced to interact with him. Alia, seeing no point in lying, fesses up straight away and tells her she needs to toughen up and talk to Luca and that they can still be friends. Marinette then tells her that the reason she doesn't want to see him is that he's still in love with her and she'll never feel the same because she loves Adrian and doesn't want to hurt him even more. So, that's BS. Never feel the same, my ass. I was watching in that cinema during Truth and saw you almost smooching and all the flirting. Hell, the only reason in universe their relationship didn't work was because she kept lying to him and it hurt his feelings. I don't remember it being because of Adrian solely. I mean, he was still with Kagami at that point in the story. False narrative, fake news, Marinette, you liar. Alia, who's channeling my inner thoughts this episode, tells her she's overreacting. But Marinette replies that he's been akumatized twice because of her. And yeah, I guess. But I'm pretty sure the first time was because Bob Roth was being a turd and stole his music as well. And the second time was because Marinette kept lying to him. Wasn't because she loved Adrian and he got jealous. I feel like this is just blatantly ignoring the plot of the other episodes. Nice. Anyway, Alia tells her that if he gets akumatized, Ladybug can just save the day and then she won't have to worry anymore because he'll have a charm to protect him forever. Hmm. That's actually quite brutally pragmatic. I like it. Maybe Ladybug should purposely let people get akumatized to whittle down the available people Shadow Moth can transform. Although, it's probably not very ethically sound. 
We then move on to the school where Marinette, hiding behind a wheelie bin, approaches Julika and asks if she can find a way for Luca to not be at the party, reasoning that it wouldn't be a good birthday if the girl who broke his heart was there. <laughs> what? This is one of the most selfish and unreasonable requests I've seen in this show. Oh yeah, can you ask your brother to leave his house on his birthday and not attend his own party? That way, I can go and Alia will stop bothering me. Instead of me talking to him, I'm going to make you, his sister, do my dirty work and potentially damage your relationship with him because it would be awkward for me. Yeah, totally reasonable request. Time to uninvite Marinette from the next couple social gatherings, in my opinion. This is actually cruel behaviour. Yikes! And poor Julika's so quiet and shy she can't even find it in her to say no to her friend. So awkward times all around. Anyway, Marinette then wheels herself away, and we move on to the next scene back on the boat. Julika approaches Luca and tells him that she's going to be having a party on the boat and that Marinette's going to be coming around, trying to hint to Luca that he needs to vamoose on the day. But then he gets excited, telling her he's relieved and that he thought Marinette was avoiding him. Awkward. Also, I think she loses good sister points for even trying to do this, by the way. Anyway, he notices there's something still wrong and tries to press her on it until their dad, Jagged Stone, appears at his window asking to get let in. Jagged comes in and basically ignores Julika and talks only to Luca until he gets busted by his ex, who's angry that he's coming to their house without her permission. And yeah, fair enough. I can't imagine it would be nice to see your ex's car outside your house only to find him alone in your kid's bedroom having snuck in through the window. Trying to cool the tension, Luca asks him if he can come to the party, to which the mum says that Julika has to give her permission, which she does. And this scene made me sad. It's clear she hasn't spent any real time with her dad and feels completely ignored compared to Luca. This dude needs to lift his game, honestly. Gone for their whole lives and then returns only to spend time with one of the kids. Dank indeed. He then dives out the window and George of the Jungles himself into a concrete wall. How very rock and roll. And at this very convenient moment, Julika finds herself receiving calls from her friends who either want Luca there or don't want him there. As well as Luca himself who's excited that everybody's coming over to see him. Poor Julika. Why must she suffer like this? And then the day of the party's upon us and the guests arrive with Alia congratulating Marinette on being brave enough to face Luca. With Marinette getting all arrogant about it and saying, the time comes where you have to grow up and face things in life. Before she notices him and runs away. And by the way, did she just dive down the stairs? She'd rather risk breaking her neck than confront Luca? For a superhero, she's really struggling with this confrontation thing. This then prompts Julika to run away crying out of guilt and Luca to start moping because she doesn't want to be his friend anymore. And way to ruin a joint birthday with your selfish ways, Marinette. How hard would it be to say, hey man, are we still cool? Instead of freaking out and hiding like a five-year-old. Jesus. Good thing Adrian wasn't here as well. Her head would have exploded. Also, side note, is no one noticing that Julika ran off crying? Like, Luca, I get it. You're upset because of losing your friendship with Marinette. But seriously, half blaming your sister because she couldn't work up the courage to let you down and then not even following her when she breaks down is in itself selfish. Come on, dude. And of course, this is the moment that good old Gabe tries to crawl out of his cave and send out Nakuma, only for Luca's friends to envelop him in a big group hug and make him feel a lot better. Poor Gabe, he was so excited. But then he does a big brain move here and tells the Akuma to linger at the party. Because there's sure to be some negative energy at a teenager's party at one point or another. And again, seriously? Everyone just worrying about Luca? Julika was in tears, remember? And Marinette kamikaze herself down the stairs. Nobody wants to check on them? Anyway, we cut away to Julika and Marinette downstairs where they're hiding behind a counter with Marinette having the audacity to ask why Luca's at the party. With an angry look on her face, no less. Oh, I don't know, Marinette. Maybe because he is her brother, and this is his house, and those are his friends, you absolute muppet! Anyway, since Julika feels so guilty, the Akuma comes looking for her, only for Marinette to apologise for putting her in the impossible situation and giving her a hug. Poor Gabe, he's having a rough day of it. And even though Marinette was a total twerp about having the audacity to ask Julika to uninvite Luca, at least she realised she was in the wrong and apologised, so that's something. We then cut back to the party on the upper deck where Jagged Stone arrives to the shock and awe of the teens. Shock and awe which is only amplified by him calling Luca son and asking for some wrapping paper. So are you telling me that neither of them told anybody that Jagged Stone was their dad? Julika didn't even tell Rose? Rose who trusted her with her medical condition secret? She figured, nah, I'm not going to say anything. Harsh! And then Shadow Moth tries again to prey on their feelings of betrayal for not being told. Only for that to backfire. 
And yeah, it's like if I was at a mate's place and suddenly they say, oh, by the way, this is my dad, Hugh Jackman. Am I going to have a tantrum being like, oh my God, you didn't tell me before. Our friendship's a lie. I hate you. Nah. Classic Gabe not understanding how the human mind works. And also it looks like he's having a mild aneurysm from the stress of all this. And then downstairs, Julica and Marinette have the same conversation. But didn't Marinette hear that Jagged Stone was their dad during Truth? I could have sworn Ladybug was there. Is this some act so she can pretend, or did she legit completely forget? I'm confused. And it also turns out she thinks that Jagged loves Luca more than he loves Julica. And fair enough, from the very limited interactions we've seen, they've hardly spoken, and he literally jumped away when he saw her like she was a demon, so I guess there's that. And then at that moment, as if to crush her spirit even more, Jagged comes in with Luca in a guitar case, telling Luca it's a very special instrument, that it'll make his head spin, but to not tell his sister. And of course she gets upset, and Gabe attempts to strike once more. Marinette ironically then tells Julica it's all a misunderstanding, and that the best way to resolve things is to talk things out, before jumping up and scolding Jagged for getting Luca a present but not Julica, and not paying enough attention to her. Jagged then tells Marinette that she ruined the surprise, and that the guitar is actually a bass for Julica, the first one he ever owned. Aw, that's actually kinda cute and sweet, but still good on Marinette for clearing all that up. Normally spoiling a surprise like that might be embarrassing, but considering how Jagged had treated Julica, the confrontation was probably justified. And meanwhile, poor Gabe is hemorrhaging out of rage right now. And then, as his gift to Luca, he gives him the original version of his first album as part of Crocker Duo. I mean, her gift is so much better. You could get that thing off eBay. The guitar's almost priceless. Dank. And then the mum storms in and yells at him for giving Luca the record that literally caused them to break up. Awkward. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the best idea for a gift after all. Anyway, they have a little tug of war over the gift before they get akumatized as the record snaps, turning them both into villains who have the power to fight each other forever to prove who was right as long as they get those pesky kids and their damn miraculouses. Anyway, the ship starts to transform and so all the kids have to run away and escape before watching the two villains start to battle in the air. Needing help to escape the group and transform into Ladybug, Marinette calls on Alia for a distraction, who channels her inner football player and takes a big dive complete with theatrics. Ladybug transforms and attacks the pair, only to find that they're a bit much for her on her own, forcing her to run away whilst complaining that Cat Noir isn't there yet. And come on now, the battle just started. Do you expect him to be sitting around ready at every hour of the day? Conveniently though, Ladybug leads the villains over a building Adrian is currently in, getting his makeup done for a photo shoot. The makeup artist tries to hide with Adrian, but he tells her to go somewhere safe while he does his makeup himself, because the show must go on, causing her to swoon. And one, big brain move Adrian, and two, stop thirsting after a minor, you creep. You're an adult. We then cut back to Marinette, who's looking a little worse for wear as we see her get launched through a chimney by a cannonball, only to be saved by Cat Noir, who lays the smack down on the villains and helps her escape after another failed attempt at flirting. Also, how did he manage to get his baton to work like a boomerang? Mad skills. The heroes and villains trade attacks back and forth for a little while before, out of the blue, Crocodile decides they need to finish their own fight. What? Why? Poor Gabe. This will literally ensure that they lose. He needs to work on who he akumatizes because these two are smooth brains. Plus, where is the senti monster? You're wearing the peacock miraculous. Use it. It's not there for fashion. Seriously though, Gabe just seems so done with it. Maybe it's time to just detransform, make a hot chocolate, have a bath, and go to bed. It's over. We then see that their little battle, whilst taking place in the sky, is actually smashing up the city. And who knew that cannonballs falling from the sky was a bad thing, am I right? Anyway, funnily enough, their children are almost killed by their little jewel, only to be saved by the timely intervention of our heroes, who discuss with them how even though their lovers died, that isn't a reason for them not to be friends. And they're laying the moral of this story on a little thick here, don't you think? Anyway, Ladybug uses her lucky charm, which turns into sticky tape. Ladybug then tells Luca to run and hide while she grabs Julica and zips away, leaving Cat Noir in the dust to fight alone for a little while. Sidekick much? Also, Ladybug totally messed up there, saying she'd talk to him later. She also told him that earlier in the episode, so I'm on two minds about this. It would be very miraculous to just gloss over her mistake and have no consequences at all, but the next episode to come out is Wishmaker, which features Viperion against a villain that really has no personal relevance to him at all. And it feels like they're actually releasing episodes to flow in little mini-arcs in the larger story, like we have with Alia. And legit, this could be two episodes or maybe even more with Luca relevance. Plus, there's a lot of discussion over whether Luca's going to learn Cat Noir's identity in Wishmaker, and with Marinette's little stuff up here, there's some credence in that theory, so who knows? Ladybug then gives Julica the Miraculous of the Tiger, which gives you the power of influence. <laughs> what? What does that even mean? Hold on, I just checked it, 
and apparently it's a mistranslation, and it's apparently the power of exaltation. Man, these miraculous powers are getting very, very specific. Oh well, at least the actual jewel is really cool and unique looking. Although I'm not sure how you could wear that in public and pretend it's just normal day wear. It's so specific. And then she transforms and has the best costume and theme music of all time. Of all time. Let's just change the show to be about her instead. I'm in. Anyway, we cut away to Cat Noir, where he's just finished rescuing some random guy, only to be confronted by Ladybug and our newest hero, who introduces herself as Purple Tigress. Lame name, better than Pigala, but still lame. And Cat Noir's reaction to having another cat-like superhero is so predictable, but it's still pretty funny. Although, don't brush up against people like that without their consent, please, Adrian. It's kind of creepy. Anyway, Ladybug tells him to launch them high into the sky, so he extends his power pole and throws them up. Like, really up. Above the clouds up. How strong is he? Jesus. Anyway, despite the two villains flying all over the place, our two heroes manage to land on one of the two vehicles and begin their own little mini battles, managing to both steal one half of the broken record and destroying them to try and dehumatize them. But turns out though that now is the time for sticky tape, because for some reason they have to fix it before they break it. And that makes no sense, because if the Akuma entered the record and then it broke, wouldn't that have released the Akuma? It does every other time. So really, they should have been deacumatized back on the boat when they first snapped the record. Shouldn't they? Oh well. Anyway, whilst Ladybug tapes up the record, Tigress uses her power Collision to punch the villains into the stratosphere. Which is actually so cool, but how is this the power of exaltation? Everywhere I look for a definition, it keeps saying that it's either extreme happiness, raising a person's rank, a flock of larks, or a location of a planet where it exerts its maximum influence. And I'm guessing this is where the mistranslation comes from. So my best bet is that it makes Julika super happy to punch her parents into oblivion. Fair enough. Also, I did like Cat Noir's face at realizing she has a power that's actually cooler than his. And honestly, I think she has the best of everything. Best miraculous, best animal, best power, best costume, best color scheme, and best theme song. Total package. Too bad she'll probably appear probably, what, once more this season? Cat Noir then uses Cataclysm to destroy the record, even though they probably could have just snapped it again. But you gotta have him do something, am I right? I can just imagine in the writer's room, them frantically rushing around trying to figure out something for him to do so they don't get criticised on Twitter for the millionth time for him being sidelined. Great work, guys. You may as well just give him a participation trophy. And then they deacumatize and restore everything to normal, luckily saving Julika's parents from falling to their deaths and crushing innocent bystanders while they're at it. Ladybug then gives them their magic charms and the heroes leave so they can resume the party, where Julika serves up her parents for arguing and not taking responsibility for themselves. And then they argue as they both try to claim that they were the one at fault. And I equally love and hate these kind of moments. It's humorous, but at the same time it's frustrating that the whole episode tries to teach this specific moral lesson and the characters are meant to have learnt something only for them to immediately go back to the exact same behaviour and everyone in the background just laughs it off like ha ha ha! It's not like they didn't kill half of Paris because we couldn't deal with disagreements like proper adults, am I right? Ha ha ha! They'll never change. That's so funny. Good morals, team. We then cut away to night, where Julika and Jagged get some long-awaited father-daughter bonding. And this was cute. Whilst Luca asks Marinette when she's going to confess to Adrian. He then proves himself the ultimate Chad, and tells her that one day she'll be able to tell him, and then they agree to be friends. Chad, 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 Chadley Chad. Ah, He is honestly the best character in this show, I swear. He's so understanding, and he's so nice. He's literally only sad because he thought she didn't want to be friends anymore. Hope he finds someone. And then that brings us to the end of the episode. And I thought it was pretty good, but I feel like nobody's talking about it because it's been overshadowed by the Wishmaker trailer. And that's a shame because it honestly is good and I think the fandom is going to look back fondly on it, even if the moral of the story is laid on super, super thick. But that's just my opinion and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the episode? Like it? Hate it? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.